All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cade Gaming. Today, I'm excited to show you something very new and indie. This is Trash of the Titans. This is a demo for the game. The game has not even been released yet. Um, it's something that I love a lot, by the way. I've already wishlisted the game. Uh, Trash of the Titans, think of it kind of like a turn-based tactical RPG where you play as these kind of, um, I guess I'd say woodland creatures. You know, you have a badger, a skunk, a possum, and so on. Uh, it's tons of fun, and if you ever played uh, Final Fan Fantasy Tactics or anything like that, this game is right up your alley. Uh, so go ahead, grab a coffee. I know I have mine, uh, and let's dive right in. Um, for the purpose of the video, I actually really enjoy this game on the mild setting, the mild spice. Uh, I'm gonna stick to the first act, of course, that is the demo. And the party, I'm gonna keep the same because that's that's what you got for the demo as well. Um, I'll show you a little bit more in game, but this game is very fun because it also brings in some slight roguelike mechanics. I'm not gonna say it's a roguelike at all. Um, maybe there are some hints of it. And one run through this demo took me a little over an hour, actually. Um, so to give you a quick lay of the land and the purpose, so this is our party up here in the top left. I have these four characters. Um, there are trash cans. Those all have trash. And there's a little slight story, nothing serious, but basically the mice or rats are coming through and trying to steal your trash. And so what we do is we take our turns to fight these guys. What they do is they'll sometimes fight you, but otherwise they'll just run straight for the trash and then they have an escape route. Uh, in the bottom right, you can see the turn order right here. Uh, so right now I'm playing as the badger, that's this character. Uh, to move, I could press Q or I can press W to attack, E to use an ability. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use charge, which to give you an idea, charge in a straight line at target enemy and deal double the distance in damage. So I'm gonna start by that. Each character has HP, MP, and actions, right? So I can still also attack after using that. And I still have movement as well, so I can kind of move around the map. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna walk around and kind of block their path. Uh, if ever you make a mistake, there's an undo button right here. So amazing quality of life addition for a tactics game like this. If you do something and you regret it, you can undo it. And then A and D rotate the map as well. So I'm gonna end my turn and show you guys a little more. The raccoon is my rogue. Rogues have backstab as an ability, which is if you are stealth, you will deal extra damage, or if you attack from the back, you will deal extra damage as well. So see, I can do that, and then I can vanish again so that he doesn't get hit, which is what I want to do, because the rogue is a little bit more squishy than the badger. This is my archer. The archer can attack farther depending on how high up they are in the terrain, which is really cool. So you can see I can attack the whole map from up here. Um, however, I also have a, an ability called ricochet, which is an ability where it'll bounce to two different people. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and kill that first guy. It uses up my action, but that's totally okay. And I'm just gonna end right here. And then the skunk is your mage. I think both of these characters have supportive abilities, uh, which I think is nice. You kind of have options there when you're talking about what do you want to do. Um, you can kind of build them out how you like as well, which I think is really, really cool. I'm gonna move a little closer and do an attack. I can't get to this boon, unfortunately, but when you kill a bigger monster, usually there's one dropped per round. You step on this kind of opened uh, cat food can and it gives you a permanent buff immediately. Here, so I'm gonna end my turn. The exclamation marks means more enemies are gonna spawn. So he got upgraded to a new thing. <clears throat> Let's see, all right, I'm gonna start with an attack here. And then maybe I'll move around here and I'll keep around these poison clouds as well and see, see what I can do. Um, for him, I kind of do want to move through. I can walk through enemies while invisible. When you walk through the poison, by the way, it won't hurt you. It's kind of a cool little quality of life thing. So I'm gonna walk up here and attack. And I'm gonna end my turn. Ooh, and we got stuff behind us. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, this 
this guy. Ooh, that might not be a bad idea, but I have two guys up here. I want to make sure that they can't get to this as well. And then I'll uh, end my turn. I'm going to have my skunk, I'm going to have her do some, uh, some poison up there so they're poisoned. And then when they start their turn, they'll take a little extra damage. And then I'll finish that guy off right there. And I want to move her out of harm's way. Her passive is great. So allies within four squares of her will regen an extra MP. So by standing right here, both the badger and the, the archer will get more MP, which is pretty cool. Um, and then outside of that, there's a really great mechanic at the end of combat, too, where depending on how many trashes you have saved, you'll gain basically bonus permanent stat upgrades for characters, too. So I'll show you that. But first, let's grab this boon. Uh, it applies to random characters regardless of who picks it up, and I can choose. So cannonball for the badger. Leap to an empty square, dealing your attack damage to nearby enemies. Gain extra range and radius when leaping from greater heights. Or poison shot. Possum's attack applies three poison counters. Uh, I love Cannonball. I took it in my last run. It was a lot of fun to walk up to a high spot, basically, and then just launch myself at someone. I'm going to charge up here, and then I'm going to attack the back one, too. <laughs> oh, I love the animations. I think they're great. Here we go. I'm going to attack this one. And then I don't have enough to go invisible. So I'm actually going to stand right here and see if I can bait this guy into the poison. I love, love, love a tactical game. For those who don't know me, I play them all the time. I think the love came early on from games, honestly, like Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. That was, I think, one of the first ones for me. Um, but I also would say, not just that game, but truthfully, too, um, I want to show you guys. Oh, I don't have enough for Cannonball, never mind. Um, truthfully, too, I actually play a lot of MMOs. I'm a very, very big fan of MMORPGs. Um, and one of my favorites when I, when I was young was Dofus, which is like a turn-based tactical party MMORPG. So at the end of combat here, we won. You can see we got all of our trashes saved, and then you earn another boon at the end. So Skunk, she can get a lightning ability that dazes and deals damage to a target and a nearby enemy. That's awesome. Or Leg Shot. Possum's attacks apply slow, which is awesome. Um... It's, oh, that's a really hard one. I mean, Days is obviously great because it hits two targets and also they aren't able to attack. Slow slows them down. Um, she could use a little more damage, so I'm going to actually take that on her. So this is the screen I was telling you about. This They've inserted Tetris to the game, <laughs> and I love it so much. So the way that it works, the current one is your potato crisps. So these give vitality. Um, from there, as you can see, where I put it, it'll give those stat bonuses to the character below, right? So for example, when I created my party, it was strategic, right? I have physical damage dealers here, and then people who use a little more MP here. Um, so this I can also rotate using A and D, or my mouse wheel as well. Um, this here's my tank. I'm not opposed to giving all of my vitality to my tank, so I'm gonna do that. And if ever you want to, you actually press the S button to save it for later, and it gets put up there, so you can instead play stuff there. You can swap between the two at any time, so it works really, really well. Um, for this one, I really would love to give both of these characters um, some attack damage. I don't really need to give it to the skunk here. Um, what do I want to do? I could place this here. She, of course, benefits from MP. Uh, I'm going to do... I'm going to do... This, I think. Oh, wait. I have an idea here. Oh, I have a great idea. Okay, we're going to do this. Um, I am going to swap this out and rotate it here. So I'm going to give all the MP, actually, to the possum. Because the possum will use it while she'll need it. 
And then from there, I'm actually gonna use my Sandwich of Wisdom to finish off and give it all to her. And when you finish a row, you can actually see all those little green squares. Whatever thing you finish with gives each person two points of that stat. So sometimes you can kind of plan around, right? And then this, the purple one to clarify, I didn't show you, the mobility. So you can actually give characters, of course, a little more speed and movement if you want to. So I'm gonna save that for now. I don't need to worry about mobility as much. Um, and then you can see my map here. And again, this is just the demo. You'll see there'll be kind of a mid-range boss and then a final boss for the first act later. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to record a bit of content. I'm going to bounce ahead, maybe show you a little bit more what, what some future fights might look like and show you how things can sometimes get a little bit more unique as well as some of my upgrades. All right. So we finished our second fight. We, of course, we kept all five of our trash. Um, now we can choose to upgrade. So I can either give, this is our archer guy on both sides. I can either give him a little bit more of a healing path, a supportive path, which is not bad. Uh, or I can give him ricochet upgrade, which your attacks can strike four instead of two, which is not bad. My only thing is like, you can't always have four people close together or side by side. So sometimes it's kind of difficult. However, I do feel that I'm missing right now a little more AOE damage. So I'm actually going to take that as an upgrade. So this time we actually got an item, the Orb of Outthinking. So you're actually going to gain damage for every four wisdom you've given to someone. And of course it gives four wisdom. So I'm absolutely giving this to my skunk. I want her to be able to have that um potato crisps what can i do with this here um this is kind of a tricky one here um obviously i prefer to give more potato crisps to oh hey okay let's do this let's give mobility to the tank slash warrior Ooh, um okay I'm gonna swap for a sec and give health to that person as well oh um I'm gonna swap here and place all the damage there. And that way I can give more MP. Obviously, like, people benefit from having MP regardless. Um, I wish I could give more MP to my skunk over here. Oh, that's a hard decision. I think, yeah, actually, you know what? If I do this, it'll give everyone a little bit place that there. I know that this might not be the most ideal circumstance, but I think I'm going to do that instead. And then I'll place the damage up here so that I'm buffing both the tank and the rogue with more power. All right, and then let's continue on to our next fight. All right, so this map, as you can see, this one is a little bit bigger. Enemy started right next to the garbage of course so you need you need to be ready and you can see they're gonna go in different directions and everything so what i'm gonna do i love this very much i'm gonna show you guys cannonball i'm gonna have my tank go all the way up to the highest point on this map i'm gonna use that cannonball ability and see how far the range is the only downside being i haven't fully like upgraded damage on this character it's not gonna be hitting too hard but it's aoe and that allows me to then you know do a little damage to everybody which is what we need the tank also has a passive by the way where the more damage the tank takes uh the more damage the tank will deal so i'm gonna do that you can actually after the food is dropped here you can then secure it by walking over it so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna move back and then i'm gonna use vanish to protect myself a little bit uh one nice thing about this game you regen all of your stats in between combats. To me, that's massive in terms of quality of life. I appreciate that tremendously. I think that's such a great, great thing to have because it makes me feel like I can kind of just unload abilities a little bit more. So that makes me really, really happy. I, I think they did a great job with that one. All right, first things first, let's get ourselves a boon. Let's see. Stubborn. When reduced to zero HP, delay death until the end of your next turn and deal double damage. Or Singularity. Deal eight damage in an area and pull all affected units towards the center. Um, I've said this before in other videos. I don't want to play like I'm going to die. 
This is great, like, if it's eminent, and I know. So I'm gonna take Singularity instead, give her some AoE that's gonna help me deal a little more damage anyways. And then I'm gonna move here, do a side attack, and then stand front and center. I wanna be a distraction to these enemies. Perfect, and we got five pieces of meat too. Uh, bash and knock back all units in a line, or entangle near target grass tile, take four damage and cannot move for a turn. I love the idea of this, but it does require grass tiles, therefore I hate to kind of rely on that. Plus, I think this character could use some more AoE, so I'm gonna take this. Let's see what we got. Coupon of savings. Reduce the MP cost of abilities by one and plus four wisdom. Um, this one's a hard one, so I don't have a great way to give it to her right now. Oh yeah, actually, wait, I could. I would then have to give her the tall stack there, if you guys see that on the right. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Let's give it to her. That's gonna help so much. And then let's give her the potato crisps of vitality. Uh, well, actually, yeah, no, let's do it. We're gonna give her some health. I know she doesn't need it, but listen, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I'm going to press S to save that for later. I'm gonna give some mobility to these two because I think that's really gonna help. And then this is actually really nice here. So this will give everyone some health. So I'm just gonna drop that and it won't block anything in the process too. And then my save for later... I could, I could drop it. Actually, I think I'm just gonna save it just in case. The downside, of course, being I'm not giving attack to anybody, but that should be fine. And then let me go ahead. I honestly, I wanna bounce ahead to the middle boss fight at least. You guys can see some of that. So I'll bounce back in just a minute. All right, here we are. I'm at the halfway point. Uh, I want to say it probably took 20 to 30 minutes to get here. Uh, and that's having some familiarity, not kind of learning the ropes or anything. Um, and so here, this is that midway boss point. So there's going to be a lot more enemies and kind of different things. Uh, so the first thing I want to point out is this is your mini boss right here, right? Um, you also now have auras on some enemies. So this one right here, Sasha, right? Kind of a unique enemy, if you will. If you look in the top left, it shows you the stats, but it also says Captain Sasha, rats within three squares gain blood pact, which damage received by this rat will be split with adjacent rats. So basically damaging one, instead of them taking Taking all the damage, they'll split it with the others. So this is actually a really great map for me to climb up to the top again and show you an awesome cannonball right down into the middle of it. I'm gonna go ahead and jump down and do that. And what I wanna do too, I wanna have, I wanna have, let's see. I wanna see, what can I do here? I can charge. I can also bash. It's not going to push him anywhere, though. Uh, I'm going to have him move forward a little bit. We want him to actually take a little bit of damage, so that way this character will essentially be dealing more damage because he's missing health. For my rogue, I want to vanish. I want to come right up here. Deal an attack. And see, he's not going to die because they're... They're sure in health. And then I'm gonna vanish again so the rogue doesn't get jumped. Um, for the possum, the possum, I got a couple upgrades. The first thing is I got a turret. So I'm gonna place this turret right here. Turrets are awesome. You can summon a few of them and they cost MP. So you definitely wanna give MP to the possum. But that turret cannot move, but it's another archer. And it's also like a meat shield. So that character specifically can actually distract some of these bosses and prevent them from hitting allies instead. So I'm gonna do that, and this turret is just otherwise free damage on that boss, which is awesome. Um, my skunk, I wanna keep her close so she can help increase that regeneration. And then let's see, I'm gonna start with a toxic gas, because that should actually probably kill both of them. And then I'm gonna see, I don't know if the singularity will pull anyone anywhere because of location, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this. One small quirk that I hope they can maybe fix with the game is that 
bosses or mini bosses, it doesn't show the amount of damage you're gonna deal to them in an AOE like the other abilities do. So I actually, I think I really would appreciate seeing that too, uh, as you may have just seen in my AOE earlier. Um, other than that though, this game is amazing and polished and it is something that I love so very much. I think it is tremendously done. Um, I think it's, it's exciting. I think there's a lot of potential there. Oh, you cannot knock him back. I should have read that. Cannot be slowed or disabled. Um, the boss also at the end of each turn gains two damage and loses 20 HP. So the nice thing is even though this boss is beefy, big Trevor, um, he will kind of take care of himself in a couple of ways. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's get ourselves a boon. Let's see. Upgrade the turrets. Turrets gain all of Possum's passive abilities and two additional range. Or Shockwave. Send a Shockwave through the earth that deals seven damage and applies slow. Um, I'm going to upgrade the turrets. I don't have much, but the one passive that the Possum does have is the increased damage and range from a higher altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go, and let's see, is that is that the combo? There you go, and they weren't able to summon more enemies either, so that completed it for us. I did see the exclamation mark on the timeline. Ooh, stone skin, that's kind of cool. Um, I think I'm gonna take Throwing Star, because this character does need to be able to hit with some range and get a little bit farther out there. Uh, but I'm actually, I'm gonna stop the video here. Comment below, tell me what you thought, please. Uh, let me know if you're interested. I know the devs would actually probably really appreciate the support. Even just wishlisting this game helps them a bunch. Um, of course, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed what you saw today. And also comment below, let me know if you wanna see more. Um, I absolutely plan on buying this on release. I want to create another review, unlock the other characters, see the, the later acts in the story. Um, and then finally, of course, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your support. I appreciate each and every one of you. Every single time that you like and comment, I see it and I appreciate it. Um, if you like what you see, don't forget to click that subscribe button. It actually helps me the most. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, and of course, when you subscribe, there will be new videos each week, twice on Tuesdays and Fridays. My name is Cade. I hope you enjoyed your coffee. And happy gaming!